Good morning, uh, welcome to worship on this, the 7th of August, 2022, St. John's Presbyterian Church. We humbly acknowledge that we worship on the traditional lands cared for long before our arrival by many nations. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Bow down before him, his glory proclaim. We're going to sing the first three verses of hymn number 321, 321, Praise to the Lord the Almighty. <laughs>
Let us pray. Lord God, we adore you. You are a God of power. The whole universe is alive with your energy of its potential, immensity, and complexity we know so very little. But it points us to you, points us to you as creator and sustainer. Lord God, we adore you. You are also a God of love. Your power has a purpose, and we see evidence of that in the beauty of creation and in the human potential for understanding, for creativity, and for care of your creation. Above all, your love and your power are focused in the life and death and rising again of Jesus of Nazareth. With joy, we celebrate his resurrection by which you have shown yourself to be a God of power, stronger than all the powers of darkness and sin, keeping us safe in your care. But you have shown yourself also to be a God of love, love that was not quenched by the hatred and the bitterness of the cross. And because of this, we believe that you will go on loving us, loving all that you have created until the end of time. Lord God, you made the hearts of the disciples and our hearts glad with the knowledge of the resurrection. Forgive us, because like the disciples, we find the truth of the resurrection so hard to believe. Forgive us that we are so easily downcast and given to despair. Forgive us that although we claim to live by the resurrection faith, we so often appear to believe that suffering is simply a tragedy and that death is the end. Forgive us that we take so much convincing of the hope that you give to the world. Come to us, Lord God, in the power of the risen Christ. Take away our crippling doubts and fears and forgive us our sins. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen. I'm going to read responsively from the um, books that I hope you picked up on your way in, the red ones. Psalm number eight. Oh Lord, our oh God. How majestic is your name in all the earth. Your spirit is chanting above the heavens by the mouths of babes and infants. You have set up a defense against your foes to steal the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them? Mortals that you care for. Yet, you have made them a little lower than the angels. 
Grant them the glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet. All sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field. The birds of the air and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the path of the sea. O oh Lord our God, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Amen. Amen. Uh, Julie Gangani is going to uh, read our uh, scripture from John's Gospel. The hymn is number six, seven, seven. I don't know what time verses there are. I need to find it. We'll sing the first three verses. My faith looks up to thee.
of hunger and death had me wondering if these words of Jesus are no longer relevant. Jesus was never unmindful of people's needs. We remember well how just before the passage that we read this morning, he miraculously fed thousands of people when his disciples wanted to send them away. But the truth is that feeding those people caused all kinds of problems for Jesus. Crowds of ordinary people were so impressed with what he had done that they would have taken him by force and made him king. So earnestly that he had to retreat to a mountain to get away from them. But of course, when he returned, they found him. At this point, Cain, loving, empathetic Jesus, yes, the Jesus who so recently had miraculously met the physical need of a hungry body, saw the need to speak to the whole person within myself, to each individual whole person. He points out that their desire to idolize him was because the physical hunger had been filled. And looking at the crowd, I think Jesus was overcome by their total needs, their mental needs, 
There's physical need. There's spiritual needs. I think looking at the crowd, this Jesus saw the whole man, the whole woman, the whole child, the whole infant. It was at this stage of preparing my sermon that I had an interview on CBC radio with a United Nations worker who had just returned to Geneva from the Democratic Republic of the Congo. The point of the interview was to highlight tens of thousands of refugees and the lack of resources to meet their needs. But the needs identified by this worker were not just hunger. She spoke of people who didn't know what had happened to their families where they had come from. She spoke of women suffering from the anguish of sexual abuse. And she went on and on, identifying not the physical hunger of those people that she had witnessed, but the anguish in their faces, the hopelessness in their speech, the wonder about the future. That interview put into context for me, Jesus moving from feeding the body to the total need that any human being, you and I included, has within them. He speaks of bread from heaven, which gives life to the world. And the people say, give us this bread. And Jesus says, I am that bread. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. What Jesus recognized, I think, at that point, was our hunger, our thirst for more than bodily needs, more than bread and water and even more luxurious food than that. Jesus recognized the hunger for God. We want to know that our lives are not just some accident of fate. We want to feel that there is some purpose in our lives. Oh, there are some, and you know them, and I know them, and they're your friends, and they're my friends, who say there's no need, no hunger for God. And then we try to respect and not argue with their position. I do anyway you now. I have a hunch that deep inside them, they long for more than a good life. More than a month that ignores all that is going on around them and beyond them. Jesus answered that hunger for God by telling us that when we give ourselves to the needs of others, to the needs of the world, we find within ourselves and within the community where we are moving, we find God's presence.
when we pick up on the claim that God is discovered as we give ourselves to others and to causes beyond ourselves, we become aware, I do, of another hunger within us. I think we all hunger for trust. We hunger for something to put our trust in, in the midst of climate change, in the midst of war, in the midst of all kinds of inequality, in the midst of the few whose power seems to control our lives and the life and security of the world, we look for something to trust something to put our trust in. The world in which the disciples had to witness after Jesus' death was really not so different from the world that you and I live in. Their hunger for something to put their trust in was filled by the resurrection and the gift of the Holy Spirit. And so, Jesus says to you and to you and to you and to me this morning, I understand your need for bread, for food, for your body. But do not neglect your need for spiritual good, so that you will be strong when life is difficult. You will be strong when life ends. He says, come to me, and I will provide you with the peace and the direction that you need in life. Amen. The hymn is number 636, When Voices Are Confusing. If there are three verses, you sing them. If there are more, you sing three.
for anyone there visiting who has an offering and expects it to be collected at this point during COVID, we have been asking people to put their offering in the offering plate, which is on the communion table there. I'd like to welcome any visitors who are with us this morning. I heard, I didn't actually meet them by name, but I heard that we have two visitors who just dropped in, and that makes us very happy, and God also very happy. Let us pray. Let us give thanks to God for abating our body's hunger. Give thanks that we indeed have daily bread. Give thanks that we are able to eat. Let us give thanks to God for abating our soul's hunger. There are times in our lives when we desperately need to know God's presence. And he has filled those needs. Let us give thanks to God for quenching our spirit's thirst. And for the lasting satisfaction which Christ alone can give in our lives. We give thanks for the ministry of prayer and the ministry of intercession that has been given to us. And in the light of our study of scripture today, let us pray for the hungry in our world. Lord, we pray for those who hunger for justice. The black child deprived of opportunities. The poet denied freedom of expression. The farmer whose lands have been taken away. The believer forced to hide the faith within him or her. The poor whose work brings little reward. Father, Feed us with the bread of life, that we may hunger no more. We pray for those who hunger for the necessities of life. The starving child in a drought-ridden land. The homeless refugee fleeing from war. The old man who cannot pay to heat or to cool his home. The vagrant who buys alcohol instead of food. Father, feed us with the bread of life that we may hunger no more. We pray for those who hunger for healing, for the child in pain or discomfort, for the mother in the depths of depression, for the frightened boy rushed into hospital, for the injured coming to terms with disability, for the dying man or woman longing for a good death. Father, feed us with the bread of life that we may hunger no more. 
we pray for ourselves. Each one of us hungering this morning for something. Hungering that our loved one will be cured. Will reach a full recovery. Hungering that our grief for a lost loved one would end. Hungering to be strong in this world with all its challenges. We offer these prayers for ourselves, each one of us at a different stage in life. And we offer the words that Jesus taught his disciples. Father in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your, kingdom come. Your, will your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. A closing hymn is number 681, the first three verses. We have heard a joyful sound, Jesus saves. <laughs> into the world, may all your hungers be fed. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of God's Holy Spirit be with you and with all whom you love this day and always. Amen. Amen.